or buy drugs over the counter. But often the intake of fake medicine has been rising over time and this is beginning to create a bit of a concern uh, from uh, the stakeholders. With me is the public relations manager at the National Drug Authority, Abiyaz Ramiri. Many thanks for joining us. Thank you for having us. How are you doing today? Uh, very well. Uh, thank you and good morning the viewers. I also have uh, Julius Mayengo. He's a manager at Pharma Co-vigilance. That one I had to go a little bit slower <laughs> in order not to I'm, I'm sure by the end of this, this session you'll, you'll be able to be comfortable around it. Of course. Yeah. Uh, let me keep with you because of the nature of that particular pharmacovigilance. Mm. What is that? Pharmacovigilance. Um, I probably for me to explain what it is, mm. it, it requires me maybe to step a bit back to paint the picture in whole because pharmacovision is just a part of the bigger picture uh, in the sense that uh, drugs um, have very many good things that they do for us mm -hmm. um, but they also have the harmful parts of it, the harmful um, properties of, 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 of things that they may cause. So, whereas there's a lot of interest and a lot of um, drive for us to pursue the benefits of drugs, That's right. we cannot take our eye off the harmful side. So, pharmacovigilance is the part of, let's say, drug regulation or the health yeah. uh, healthcare practice that focuses on that to ensure that um, as we enjoy the benefits of drugs, mm -hmm. we are mindful of, of, of the harmful side effects of drugs. Okay. And of course, uh, the benefits and uh, the harm that can come from mm -hmm. uh, misuse, for example, mm -hmm. is what brings uh, the yes. National Drug Authority into force yes. as an authority that is uh, first and foremost mandated to regulate yes. the rollout of drugs across the country, right? But we have the PRO here, <laughs> <laughs> Abiyaz Ramiri. Take uh, it on. What is NDA's specific role? Uh, NDA, uh, which is a government agency mm. uh, formed by uh, the Act of Parliament in 1993, is mandated to ensure that Ugandans have access uh, to safe, good quality drugs mm. uh, that work well. And uh, within uh, that mandate, or for us to execute that mandate, uh, the law or the act gives us uh, what we need to do to ensure that Ugandans access the good, safe, quality drugs mm -hmm. that work well. And amongst uh, those uh, things uh, include uh, issues of um, um, how the, the use, and I think that's what you're alluding to, mm. uh, how is this drug used? Because a good drug, safe and uh, efficacious, must be used right. Mm. And that's why we, as National Drug Authority, are also uh, given the responsibility to regulate the supply chain. Mm -hmm. Uh, within that, we are looking at how the drugs are manufactured, how they get into uh, the places that people, uh, me and you, my auntie and your uncle, are going to access them, whether they are manufactured in Uganda or being imported, to do with the areas where they are stored and all that. Now, the, mm -hmm. the issue that you eroded uh, to of uh, access of, of medication mm. now goes to do with access yeah uh, and as as national drug authority one of the key uh, uh, deliverables we challenged ourselves uh, to for in for the last 30 years mm. is the, is to ensure that Ugandans have access and access has to do with even the physical because mm -hmm. we don't supply mm. as a regulator right. ours is to uh, ensure that the drugs ca are, are there by those who are supposed to deliver them and that is either government or private. So, so for government we regulate to the point where 
the drugs get now to national uh, medical stores and then they are taken to what they call last mile. Yeah. For private, we will regulate uh, the entire supply uh, chain from the, the importation, the storage, to now when they get into uh, the pharmacy for wholesale yeah. or those in retail and go down to uh, the drug shop. And as National Drug Authority, we've been, we put up regulations and guidelines, uh, of course, working with the Ministry of Health to ensure that the entire country is well supplied and there is easy access to, uh, to drugs. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is now any village in Uganda where you will go, uh, the smallest town, and you don't find a drug shop. And that has been intentional from how we regulate, from how we engage, uh, do our stakeholder uh, engagement, and working with the government uh, through Ministry of Health to ensure that we ease our regulatory arms. We, we are now talking about nine regional offices we've established across the country, and of course, uh, working through uh, government structures of decentralization. Uh, working with the districts, every district we have uh, work with the district drug inspector to disperse that. Now, of course, every good thing like uh, Julius uh, shared, mm -hmm. there is always a benefit mm -hmm. and there are some risks now. Okay. That access is where uh, I think the discussion of mm. uh, the use comes in, okay. that now people have got access to drugs the next door and me and you when we feel an ease mm -hmm. uh we walk to the next place of and buy drugs of convenience uh, mr ramidi uh, my apologies for halting you in your trucks there we shall be getting to that particular uh, direction very shortly but i would love to address and stay with you for now the fundamental questions that are being asked by the public Concern number one, there are reports, some can be readily verified, others it's uh, allegations that there are too many fake medicines on the market. To the extent that an average Ugandan grapples with how to figure out which is not fake, and that is a great question. And then the other question is, the uptake. There are people who do not have an idea what drug to take, when to take, but they, had, they can be able to go to the counter and ask, for example, I have a headache, give me Panadol. I feel my leg aching, give me Panadol. And this drug is given to this person without question. And that is a danger. Those are two aspects that you need to address before we go into the integrity that I think uh, the gentleman responsible for pharmacovigilance will be able to help us. Yeah, yeah. the fake uh, is something we always rush to, especially when we don't have the right answers. And it's an allegation. Mm. Uh, but let me give you what we know as National Drug Authority. Okay. And what we encourage the public to do is we regulate uh, drugs in Uganda and by the time we allow them onto the market we are sure that they are of good quality they are safe and they work as they're supposed to do and we have so many layers we use mm -hmm. to do that but the key one being a science uh, led agency we have a laboratory a quality control laboratory the best of its kind in the world, pre-qualified by a World Health Organization. Just to give you an idea, in Africa we only have 10 pre-qualified uh, pharmaceutical con control laboratories. And one of them is in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And what that means to be pre-qualified by WHO, to the level where we are, uh, uh, Julius, we, I, I want to confirm that we are on maturity level four for our laboratory. Yes. It means that anything you test in our laboratory cannot be contested anywhere in the world. And that has been done. Our laboratory has tested some of the products, 
some people have uh, tried to contest those results, have gone to, to Europe, to America, and results have turned to be the same, and they are unfortunately have lost billions of money, and that has led to the closure of the industries. Now, for us, by the time we get there, to say this, to condemn this product that mm. it is fake, mm. it is not on the hearsay. We have done uh, all the levels of checks. When we release the drug onto the market, we don't sit and say, "Now this is good." We don't sample one. We act. We, uh, we don't just. We don't test what you brought to us mm. as a as a manufacturer or as, as a dealer. As a dealer, we have uh, a department of post market surveillance that is given a heavy funding with enough resources that goes around the country every day. There is someone from National Drug Authority in every part of this country buying drugs and we call it sampling. They will mm. go to where me and you go and buy a particular product. We have them in high risks, the highly used, uh, the ones that for the, pe the pediatric ones, uh, you know, and we pick them from all over the country, bring them to our, our, our laboratory and do what we call confirmatory tests to make sure that these products are as good as we release them on the market after two, three weeks, after th uh, three months, but also to ensure that someone who get that the sample, the batch we tested, every product from that batch supplied across the country remains, meets all the standards. Okay. So we want to challenge anyone who feels that they have gotten a drug from a drug shop, from a pharmacy, and it, it it turned out to be fake. Then we can take also regulatory actions because ours is to ensure that we protect the supply chain, that it becomes airtight. Mm. We cannot say we have reached 100% of that airtightness mm. in our supply chain. They are going to be wrongdoers. They are criminals everywhere that are involved in, in businesses. Just like you will find a directed petrol, uh, petrol in one of the petrol stations. It doesn't mean that every... Uh, so, but <laughs> that's why as National Drug Authority, yeah. we put those mechanisms. That's and we, we want to work with the public. So when you procure a drug, when you access a drug from anywhere and you have suspicion, just flag it to us and we'll take action to protect Ugandans. Okay. The issue of the one key thing mm. is that we have people who are the wrongdoers I, I talked about. Mm. They are, but also some people are getting drugs. Me and you are not taking responsibility. Some, some, pe some of our people are getting drugs from hawkers. And those are the biggest uh, uh, channels of impure drugs. We don't even want to call them fake. Drugs that have expired, drugs that are actually not have, haven't expired but have been uh, exposed to extreme conditions that compromise their quality, safety, and efficacy, mm. and all that. So, it le what we are challenging you, uh, our people and Ugandans, is to ensure that you get drugs from uh, the structures we regulate, drug shops, pharmacies, uh, so that if there is any problem, we can trace it back. And that's what Julius uh, and his team okay. will do, mm. because even for them, they are functional to work. You must get drugs from a, a, a clear channel, a clear you must channel. be able to keep data so that they are following it up to the, what we call back to the source. Okay, mm. we are going into a short break. When I return, I'll go straight to Mr. Julius Mayengo uh, to dig deeper into this uh, vigilance when it comes to pharma. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt he has already spoken about the fact that some people could be accessing drugs from uh, unscrupulous individuals and of course those drugs could be compromised. Do stay with us. The discussion does continue right after the break. You're watching Morning at NTV. The Uganda AIDS Commission under the office of the President has organized the National HIV and AIDS Symposium under the theme, My Responsibility Towards Ending AIDS by 2030. 
In line with this, we will hold a talk show on NTV on the topic of financing the national HIV response on Monday 13th November 2023 from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. and we hereby invite the general public to tune in. The guests will be Dr. Bagambe Vincent, Director of Planning and Strategic Information at Uganda AIDS Commission, Dr. Sarah Kanakwa Bwayo, Head of Resource Mobilization at Uganda AIDS Commission, and Ms. Mbabazi Martha Atai, Prevention Program and Advocacy Coordinator at AHF Uganda Cares. Uh, one time, it was 2017, on 28th December, we had an accident, me with my dad, at Kampala Masaka Highway. My dad was the driver, he dozed off for some minutes. Instead of dad breaking off the car, he accelerated and we got an accident. Sadly, my dad lost his life. For us who survived, we survived with injuries, me and my brother, my sister, cause I was in coma for two months. On recovering from the coma, uh, I got a dream that my dad was coming to me running. I've taken long without seeing you, daddy. I went running to him in a dream. So my friend told me, don't go there. Don't go there. Your dad is dead. That is a ghost. My mom told me it's true. My dad had lost his life. So the message I have for drivers, if you, you feel some sleep, you have to park on the roadside for some moment and rest for some minutes or you ask for help. And if you're planning for a journey for the next day or some time, you have to have enough sleep, you have to rest. Because what, what caused us to that, in my seeing, I see it was sleep. Tweddeko, every life matters. This message was brought to you by NTV Uganda. On the next episode is brought to you by... Rockwell. Feel the positive energy. On the next episode... Olena, be careful. Come on. Vitaly, my son, how is he? Mikhail Romanovich, I'm not going to lie to you anymore. He's on the verge. Be brave. Uh, will you just keep me posted? Sure, I will. We haven't communicated much recently. It's my fault. What's your fault? What are you saying? Darina? Please bring her a glass of water and sedative, please, quickly. And get me my pills. <laughs> Boom! Now in a new bottle with the same taste and same positive energy. Available in a 320 ml PET bottle. Rock Boom! Feel the positive energy. You're watching Morning at NTV. <clears throat> and it's a tech note. We are looking into the aspects of uh, regulation of uh, drugs and uh, medicines in the country. I'm talking to officials from the National Drug Authority, particularly the public relations manager, Abiyaz Ramiri, as well as the manager for pharmacovigilance, uh, Julius Mayengo. Let me go to Julius Mayengo straight into the nitty gritty of quality access i know mr ramiri has uh, given us uh, what is no doubt a very uh, elaborate uh, overview but the specifics need to be understood when it comes to uh, drug proliferation on the market there are those that seep through the system for example and uh, nda might not be aware that this particular drug has been smuggled into kampala into wakiso mm. or let's say let's be very specific and honest into the country mm. You cannot put your hand onto the fact that these drugs are there, and then they find themselves on the shelves and counters of uh, the shops. At the level of monitoring, you can do improved visits and purchases, like he has said, but that can only do so much. What is the more complete uh, strategy to uh, deal with this particular issue? And then also find time and explain to the average Chris Higeni 
the differences in some of these drugs. There are people who you go to the counter and they tell you honestly, Christo Inasente, why don't you take this make and not the other make? And that kind of uh, puts uh, the characterization or it tells you that this drug won't work or won't work as well as I want it to work because it's from a certain place in this world and not the other. Uh, thank you, Chris. Uh -huh. um, the word fake has uh, brought us some issues before. <laughs> uh, there's a time they talked about fake hepatitis B. Uh -huh. Fake. It's a, it's a term that is not very definitive in its, in its interpretation. Uh -huh. But um, I want to use maybe a word that maybe we could say, uh, three words maybe. Uh, substandard, falsified, and unauthorized. Okay. And maybe just to go through those. Mm -hmm. um, a substandard a drug is one that doesn't meet the set minimum standards for that drug. Mm -hmm. It could be in terms of its physical attributes, mm -hmm. how it's supposed to appear, how hard it's supposed to occur, how fluid it's supposed to be, um, but also the standards in terms of its chemistry, yeah. in terms of its identity, concentration, and all that. Mm. Um, we also have falsified, which means someone is falsifying a product. Mm. They are not the owner of the product, but they are falsifying it and putting it on the market. Mm -hmm. This, of course, happens all the time in, even in other parts of, of industry. For example, you find a fake phone, a falsified phone. Yeah. It's not Samsung or Philips, where it's Philips or something like that. And then we have unauthorized. We have drugs that are not substandard. They are not falsified, but they're not authorized to be on our market. Okay. So someone would go, for example, and find a drug in Kenya or Turkey or whatever, and the drug is not substandard because it meets specifications. Mm. Um, and it's not falsified because the manufacturer of that product is the one who made it and put it on that market. That's right. But then they smuggle it mm -hmm. into the country and bring it on the market. Now, um, to for example, mm -hmm. if is that, is that down to the fact that you can see a label that tells you not to be sold outside Europe or not to be sold in Africa? Some, some, some products will have that. Mm -hmm. Some governments have taken that initiative to label their products, mm -hmm. that this is uh, not for export, it's to be sold in this area, yeah. and all that. It's, it's sometimes it's possible to see that. Most of these other products also have foreign languages. Mm -hmm. um, in Uganda, as a bare minimum, a product is supposed to be in English, in because English. we know that's the language we understand. Mm -hmm. So it's difficult to follow the instructions that's right. that are there on the product if it's they're not Chinese. understandable, or Chinese, whatever. So, to sort through all of those things um, also requires, first of all, um, the systems that he has talked about. Mm. Uh, we have a lot of post, um, what we call post-market surveillance. To, we keep scanning. Mm. But the people I think who have the best scan are the users and consumers. That's right. And although we are scanning, you asked what is the most conclusive way to approach this is to ensure that the public is aware. When, when we were young, we used to have, they used to say uh, uh, community policing mm -hmm. and, and, and resistance councils, I think they used to call them, mm -hmm. where it started with uh, this community itself. If a new person came, you quickly have sent the information to the RC who then dealt with the issue. That's right. And it was very, very effective. So it's the, it's the, there's no way around that. You have to have the public who are the people who are in these places where you're not aware mm. what should they look should they should they should they should look out for we talked about the the, the, um, the unauthorized products if you find a product that's not in english be suspicious mm. it, it's probably not authorized to be here if you find a product like you said that has that label not to be sold be suspicious mm. and send us that information or if you for example for the falsified products you know for example you bought an electronic that's called philips Mm. If you find a product, for example, in the market that is called Panado or Banado or mm. even Panado, but it's not written the right, the right way or the mm. color or anything, such peculiarities should arouse your what? 
your suspicion and you'll be able to report to us. Mm -hmm. That is the most conclusive way that has any way can act. My problem, I think I've seen, some people see these things, then they take them to social media. You find someone's on TikTok mm. uh, saying, see, that is bad products. And give that information to, to us mm. and allow us to do the what? The work. Investigation. The investigation. And then we'll find out and help not just you, but the whole country. But when you put it on social media, you really create unnecessary alarm, first of all. Mm. Pe you start sending people, you know, running up and down. And yet maybe... Maybe on your part, there's something you've missed mm. or misunderstood or misinterpreted. Maybe it's not wrong. That's right. Yes. So that is what I would encourage us to do. Then the issue of um, the India and, and uh, different kind, kinds mm. of products that are on the market. I want to assure the country that once a product is authorized by NDA, it meets the requirements and the standards for, it, for the intended purpose. Mm. And most times, people, because they find the costs are a bit different, they might say, mm, maybe the Indian one is not working. Mm. And you will find... There's a tendency for an average Ugandan to imagine, for example, yes. if a drug has been uh, uh, priced at 25000 yes. and yes. then there's a version that is uh -huh. priced at 17000 Yes, they yes. discard the one of 17000 so, Yes, thinking we, it's not effective. It's not effective or something like that. Mm. And, and you see, as uh, Abiyaz was saying, this is a business and a very lucrative business. So people, when you go to pharmacy, mm. they will tend to persuade you towards the more expensive product because that's where they make the money. That's where they make the money. Yes. So they will keep not that they really care. They don't really care. They will just <laughs> tell you, look, you, you, you need to buy this one or something All like right. that because they know mm. they get the margin of that. Mm. It's the same product and you'll probably do the same thing when you mm. take it as long as it's for the right indication. That's right. Because most times people will take a drug and it doesn't work for them, but it's been taken for the wrong indication. Mm. You get a fever and you think you have malaria. You've not tested, you've not confirmed, and you take quartem. It doesn't work. You say, look, quartem is not working. But are you sure you're treating malaria? But for as long as you have the right indication, you've confirmed, mm. look, I have a bacterial infection. It is mycoplasma, for example. And you have the right antibiotic for mycoplasma. People need to understand that even antibiotics, there's no antibiotic that kills all, and all bacteria. Mm. So I, when you go and they tell you you have an infection, one of the things you need to now ask yourself, which infection, which bacteria am I dealing with? Okay? And we have uh, things we call culture and sensitivity where you can test and find out which, what am I supposed mm. to deal with. And then there are bacteria, there are antibiotics for those specific ones. So all these things affect how um, our drugs work and how we, they are priced. Um, because, if, because of like any other business, the cost of production, you export mm. taxes at home, okay. all those things yeah, influence all these things. All right, thank mm -hmm. you very much. Let me return to Mr. Abiyaz Ramiri. Market registration is the first step in determining both access and availability, yet the extent to which essential medicines are registered, for example, is not known to the average Ugandan. How far are we on this? Um, Thank you, Chris. I don't know uh, from where we sit. Mm. You actually, an average Ugandan should know mm. the process of registering. Uh, the okay, perhaps medicine. the process should address who is able to provide these medicines in terms of sale and distribution. Mm. This is what I can uh, say, Chris. Mm. People who are involved in uh, at high level, mm. the, the high level of manufacturing, uh, importation. The, de the dealership. Uh, as in the, we classify our stakeholders mm -hmm. uh, and the public, who is the reason we exist, is our number one and priority stakeholder. Maybe you want to, uh, for, for me to share this. The reason NDA exists is uh, why, what uh, Julius mentioned, there is a lot of money in the medicine business. And because of that, it is important that there is a third party, a new top person who stands. So at one point, there's someone who is looking for money. Yeah. On this other side, there is a patient who needs a drug. The guy who wants money, he has the drug. Yeah. The, the person who is sick needs the drug. 
you need a NATO person who is capable of ensuring that he regrets, he looks into that interaction, that interaction mm -hmm. and protects the patient. And that's what, that's what NDA does. Mm -hmm. So the, we exist because we need to protect the public from the commercial interests of those who hold this political product called medicine. Okay. Now, we look at our stakeholders and map them out. The public, there is information we want the public to know. Mm. The issues of safety, efficacy, and quality. Mm. The issues of registration are com and the classification are scientific and complex that we want to protect the public from. But we deal with the people who, who are into the drugs now. Yeah. The issue that we want to ensure that the public knows is that as National Drug Authority, our number one priority is to ensure that there is availability. Okay. We have put in mechanisms of ensuring that especially those essential medicine uh, that are needed by, you know, critical uh, treatment centers like regional hospitals, government was, uh, even private, we have what we call emergency approvals. Mm. Even drugs that have not already been authorized in Uganda, if it is needed tomorrow, we will work with a, a hospital.